developing a very simple app with a graphical interface and some, a little bit of code. The difference is, in this example, we're going to focus on the Objective-C language. So we're going to create a simple project just to create a template which we can then add code to. So I'm going to create the simple project, single view application. I'll call mine Objective-C. And I'll save it on the desktop. And now I'm going to have a go at adding a new class. So I right click on the project folder, I click on new file, and I add an Objective C class from Coco Touch. And let's give it a name. But first of all, we're going to make it a subclass of NS Object. I'm going to call mine student. And I'll save this in my project folder, like so. So I'll get rid of the comments so we've got more space. And now we're going to start building the class. So my first job is to create my class properties. So I'm going to create a property for the name I'm going to create another property for the program I'm going to create a third property which is read only for the student ID That's an NS number, and that's student ID. So I've now created three properties in my public header file. So I'm now going to go to the implementation file and create getters and setters for them. So synthesize, name, and I'm going to create a private instance variable called underscore name. I'm going to synthesize program into an instance variable called program. And I'm going to synthesize student ID to a private instance variable called underscore student ID, like so. So I've now created three properties. Two have got getters and setters, and the last one just has a getter. We've now got enough information to create a new student object. So I go back to my homeviewcontroller.m file and in the view did load I'm going to have a go at creating a new object. Now you see nothing comes up that's because I have to import my student header file. Import student.h and now, if I start typing student, it now appears. Student stu1 equals student alloc init. So I've called the public initializer. OK, and then I'm going to pass this to the log file. An object and the object is STU1. And there's my code. So now I can have a go at running this. Build succeeded. And if I now look in the log file, you can see, let's get rid of some of this extra gumph. You can see that I'm printing the memory address of where the student object is. So what I'm now going to do is create a description method and override the default description method. So in the implementation file student.m 
I'm going to create a method, an instance method, which returns an a string pointer and call description. So in description, I'm going to return ns string string with format and the format's going to be name followed by the name program followed by the program like so so I'm going to pass self dot name and self dot program. So let's have a go and see how this works. Let's go back to my test code. I'm going to say stu one dot name equals mark stu one dot program equals compsci like so and now I'm going to run it again and see what appears in the log and the log file now it now says mark name mark program compsci so it's using that description method that I overrode in a few moments ago so let's go back and add some more code I'm going to create a custom constructor now so I go back to my student dot each file and I'm going to create the public interface for my constructor. It's going to return ID and I'll call my constructor init with name and a string star name. program and a string star program student ID ns number star student ID so there's my the public interface for my new my custom initializer. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to switch to the implementation file now. And let's shove it up here. And you can see there's a warning which says method definition not found. So as soon as I paste this in, that should now go away. Of course it's not returning anything, so I've still I've got a small error in my in my code. So I now to then need to see self equals super init if self do some code return self and now I can add my extra code in here. So I can't access the properties yet because the object doesn't exist. So I say underscore name equals name underscore program equals program underscore student ID equals student ID like so and then return self. So I should be able to test this now. Go back to my testing code like so so student stu2 equals student alloc init with and there's my new public constructor my initializer bit Student ID one two three four five six seven. Bang. Okay, and I've now I should have now created my new student object. What's the warning?
and I'm going to create a class method which will return a new student object. Um, and I'll call the method student with ID and it's number star student ID name ns string star name uh, program and a string star program like so. So that's my class method. So I'm going to copy that code. I'm going to go into my implementation file and I'm going to create my implementation of that code. So it's a class method, so I've got to create the student object. Student student equals and let's use my custom initializer. Student alloc init with and let's pass the data. So the name is name, program is program, and that's student ID. Okay, so I've now created my student, return student. And that's my class method finished. So let's go back to my testing code. Let's have a go at creating STU3. Student STU3 equals, it's a class method, so student, student with, um, might have to convert, and that's number, number with int, name, Matthew program computing. So I've now created a student using a class constructor. NS log STU3. And that should now print out the third student. There we are. ID was the var, name and program. So I've now showed you how to call methods with the square brackets, how to create a class, how to create getters and setters, including read-only ones, and how to create custom custom initializers and how to create class methods. So we've covered quite a bit in this example.